Hi, my name is Cy Porter, and in this tutorial, I'm responding. One of my sub subscribers wrote me having problems rendering in After Effects, and it brought back a lot of memories to me of the nightmare of crashed renders in After Effects when I took hours setting up an elaborate scene in After Effects and right when I was ready to sit back and I had finished all the hard work I wanted After Effects to render it into video file for me it would crash and I would repeatedly try to render it and it would crash over and over again so it was a total nightmare and so I'm dedicating this tutorial to eliminating problems while rendering in After Effects. And before I get started, I'd like to ask you, please, if you would like to encourage me to make more tutorials, subscribe, hit the like button, and leave comments. And also that the reason I make these tutorials is to spread the word about a story I'm making in animated forms, animated episodes, and uh, they're available to watch for free at solomation.com, and I would greatly appreciate it if you took the time to go and check those out at solomation.com. So let's get started. So here we are in After Effects. The first thing you want to consider is an upgrade. Now, the most cost-effective upgrade would be to buy more RAM, capital R-A-M. And it's one of the cheapest upgrades you can do to your system. And the reason this is worth considering is that the way After Effects works, imagine that there are all these shelves on a wall and that what After Effects does is it starts creating all these as soon as it starts to render it starts creating all of these objects and setting them up on the shelf and then with those objects it can take them and combine them together in different ways to create the render so if you don't have much RAM it would be like you don't have much shelf space so that before After Effects can even start combining all those items differently to create the render, it runs out of shelf space and it crashes. In order to render, After Effects needs to put a lot of items up on that analogy, the shelf space. So you want to buy more RAM. After Effects uses a lot of RAM, more than most programs. So the more RAM, the better. The next upgrade you want might want to consider is to buy a better graphics card that will take some of the load off your CPU. And really, any decent gamer's graphics card is going to help a lot if you don't have one. And if you really wanted to go all out, if you knew that you would be rendering if, in, if you know that you'll be rendering in After Effects a lot. I would recommend getting a Quadro Workstation graphics card, but only if you know it's worth the investment. Because the other advice I have on this tutorial, in most cases, will, will do just fine, and you, you won't need to invest the extra money. And um, But at least consider getting a decent gamer's card, which is going to help After Effects a lot. So then what we can do let's go to edit and go into preferences and let's look at memory and multiprocessing now this is where you can look at how much RAM you have I have six gigs and then you can look at what RAM is reserved for other applications and this is during the time of rendering so that this is most important and 
you can go ahead and if for some reason, like let's say you have six gigs of RAM, but this here, you have it, you have five gigs reserved for other applications. What I would recommend here is setting this down to a low number. And then what it will do is it will leave more memory available for After Effects for rendering. And if you have multiple processors, click on that, and that's going to help a lot. That'll make it so that instead of it rendering only using one of your threads, it will then you can start to use more of them. And you can try different settings with these and see which one works out. Basically, this allocates a certain amount of RAM to each thread. And I was able to get out of the eight threads on my computer, I was able to get four allocated to rendering by tweaking these two different settings. And then let's go into media and disk cache. You definitely want to do this. Click on disk caching and get a hard drive that has a lot of room and allocate a lot of memory to this disk ca caching. And basically what this is, is this makes it so that the RAM is not handling all that shelving of information. This will make it so that After Effects will start shelving a lot of information also on a hard drive. So choose a folder where it will shelve some of that animation and then allocate a lot of memory to it. Now by doing this, this could slow your render down, but this definitely rules out 90% of all of your crashes. When you do go to render, let's go ahead and open up the render queue. I'm going to be using best settings here. And that basically means that the largest size is going to be used and the most frames. Now, what to render out as. You want to render to TIFF sequences. Press OK. And the reason you want to render as TIFF sequences for two things. What it does is instead of rendering a video file, it's going to render each it's going to render a picture for each frame of the composition you're working on on the of the project you're working on so that when and if the render crashes, all you need to do is go to that file where you've rendered the TIFF sequences out to and look at the last image rendered and go back and start a new render from where that left off so that you do not lose your work when the render crashes. And then when you when you look for the output file, you just find a folder where you're going to render all of the images out to, type in a name, and, and as you can see here, it's rendered a picture for each frame. Besides the fact that you can start up where the render crashed and not lose your work, another thing it does is it's not trying, when you, when you create a video file, it does two things. It creates the video file, but it also compresses the video, com the video file, which causes a lot more work rendering and a lot more reason for the render to crash. But if you render out as images, it is not doing all that extra work of compressing the video file. And that takes a lot of items off that that shelf so that it's a lot less likely that After Effects will crash. So then when you're ready, you can go ahead and render render it out. You would push render and let it render. And then what you want to do to bring in 
you've you've rendered through and you have all those files but it still isn't a video file go into import and file and you want to find that that folder where you rendered all the images out and you want to make sure that the sequence is checked you want to select the first image and make sure that it's selected and hit OK. After Effects brings those images in as one file. So already After Effects is looking at that sequence of images as one file, as if it were a video file. So you can just take that and drag that into a new composition button here, and it will create a new composition with all of with it all set up to be rendered out as whatever video file you want to render it out as. So then if you want to compress it into a video you can upload to YouTube, it will do that with no problems because it's just taking all of those individual images and compressing them into a video file. So you've effectively divided the work between two renders and that basically, if you follow all this advice, it's very unlikely that you will have crashes during your renders. And I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, please leave a comment. And I hope your artwork goes well. Have a good day.